cool. What's up out there in uh, Jambase YouTube land? I'm here with my man, Lebo. What's up, Lebo? Doing good. Yourself? Doing good. Me and Lebo have been catching up here for a few minutes and we were getting ready to talk about the video we're publishing, but I was like, no, let's save it for, let's save it for the good stuff for the, for the, for the video intro here. Um, so we'll talk about that here in a minute, but Lebo, you have been super busy um, in the world of DIY live streaming. You're up there yeah. most days. You're on Deadhead Land. I just saw you on Rock and Roll Playhouse. Mm -hmm. um, tell uh, just briefly talk about what, what all you've been doing, the ones you've been doing yourself, and uh, any sort of progression it's taken since uh, a couple of weeks ago when you started. Yeah, so a couple of weeks ago, I'd never done a live stream before. <laughs> and then suddenly, all my gigs got canceled for the foreseeable future. And, uh, you know, being a musician who likes to play music, uh, you know, I didn't want to let that stop me from playing music for people. Uh, so I just kind of jumped in and been, and it's been real like trial by fire, just figuring out. I mean, in the, in its, you know, simplest form, it's really simple. Just get the street, you know, go to Facebook live or YouTube or Instagram live or any of those places and press live and go. But I've definitely found there's, there's things that you can do to make it run smoother. And uh, besides doing all these streams myself, which I've had a ton of fun doing, I should say, uh, it's weird because I don't, I don't have like facial expressions to gauge off of, which I've basically realized, unknowingly realized that since I was 13 years old and first started doing gigs, you know, in seventh or eighth grade, like that's been a part of live performances, the like looking out at the audience, engaging that feedback just yeah, by like I, I facial expressions. Yeah, early on, I don't, I don't know, I haven't seen the finished product yet, but early on, I know you were requesting pictures of people that you could yes. put as a little virtual audience. Is that... Is that a thing now? You've got them? <laughs> thing, I got stacks. People sent me so many. And I gotta say, it's like so awesome. Like people sent me just, you know, pictures of them at, at like festivals and stuff. And then, oh, you know, awesome. hanging out at the catch at home. And I, I gotta say, my parents sent me one. <laughs> it's oh, been awesome. so awesome because I, uh, I, what I do is I spread, I spread them out all over the floor yeah. in front of me. And then I look out and and it's it, it actually it's amazing it's it's a really good thing to do because otherwise i'm just staring at these barren walls and that's really nice yeah and so that's been really good and then you know the the other side that's kind of cool is is after the streams are done i i i, I check them out and uh and read back the comments and it's actually that yeah yeah but i get in that way i'm getting insights that i never actually even got in regular gig because because all i get to do in gigs is really read facial expressions which i'll take that you know that's that's my favorite but this whole other thing of, of what pe people are actually like thinking about while the music's going on and stuff, that's kind of interesting too. Yeah. So. And as I, as, as I joked with Reed Mathis when we, when we chatted last week or the week before I've lost track of time, um, yeah. <laughs> um, they're, they're like the most uh, respectful audiences ever, right? No one's talking during your Yeah, show. they're like, silent. Although you gotta, what I've learned is like while I'm, while I'm uh, uh, playing or singing, like I, I gotta make sure I don't look over at the screen Oh yeah, it, it could yeah, totally distract me. So I only yeah. do it in between, like in right. between songs. I'll look over there, but otherwise, yeah. in the beginning, uh -huh. I wasn't really uh, trained myself yet, and I'd, yeah. I'd be in the middle of a tune, and I'd just kind of look over, and then suddenly I'd like forget a word to song. <laughs> Okay, I love what uh, I love what Brad Barr did when he was playing. I think like an empty club in 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 Canada where he lives, and he was piping in crowd music. Yeah, so, like, that's awesome. When he took the stage, you know, it was like a big yeah. roaring crowd. And he had people boo him later in the set. <laughs> it was, it was good. It was good. I mean, that's awesome. I do think that's a thing that all of us musicians are kind of experiencing uh, uh, in a new way right now. Is and it, and it, it's cool. It kind of like like throws into question your whole perception of what a gig is and like how you gauge how it's going to, you know what I mean? Like yeah. anyhow, and it's, and that's been kind of interesting to see. I love being able to connect with people still. It's, it's really, that's kind of the thing. I just jumped in and did one and it was like so fun that I just kept doing more and yeah, I've been totally enjoying it. And they've been getting better. One other thing I like, I've actually been able to uh, catch a lot of streams too. Yeah. Like, and I've really been enjoying that. Some of my musician friends that I don't get to play with a lot, like I'm actually getting to see them play music more than I normally would yeah. because they're doing all these streams and live, you know? like getting, getting yeah, to see it live. And live. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. And that has been really cool. And one of the things I actually appreciate about it, I've been appreciating this sort of, uh, you know, low production value DIY vibes. You know, of yeah. you know, friends who I'm used to seeing them with their bands. You know, on on big, you know, three thousand person, five thousand person, ten thousand person, you know, rooms, um, with their you know crews and all that stuff with them 
taking care of guitars and all that. It's fun to just see everyone kind of fumbling a little bit. It's endearing. I actually find it endearing. <laughs> Definitely. I, uh, I, I watched, uh, I watched Dave Matthews talk about someone who plays 20,000. Um, yeah. people. he was doing one last week and he, he he's always like a very funny self-aware guy. And he was like, he was like switching guitars and he was like, in his Dave voice is like, Normally, I have someone who switches my guitar for me. Yeah, uh, totally. You know? <laughs> I clicked on, actually, I was on Jam Bass album. You guys have a great uh, section. Uh, oh, yeah, thanks. Like, listing live streams, which is awesome. Yeah. And I, I popped on there. Uh, I don't know if it was yesterday or day before or something. And and Melissa Etheridge, she's been doing daily she's one, done, right? like, every day, I think. Yeah. yeah. So I clicked on it. I was like, oh, I've I kind of noticed she's been doing it, but I haven't checked it. So I clicked on it. And she was like, she starts talking about, okay, I'm going to try this thing with a rhythm with a with the Lubra and she goes and turns the amp on and it's just like screaming feedback and you see her like jumps like, ah! and then goes turns the amp off and it's like it's so funny like that stuff's just kind of awesome to see yeah, everyone wor worse and all yep yeah it's i mean it's cool it's so human you know one of the things i always loved about when they reissued all the the, the classic jazz albums with the outtakes um you know like that was the thing as, as cds were coming out right and they were reissuing yep. all the jazz ones and they would you know, the original album had like six tunes on it, right? And suddenly the CDs can fit eight or nine and they would do the outtakes. And I always loved it because I would get to hear like my heroes, like a guy like, like you know, Wes Montgomery or John Coltrane or someone, you, you'd hear one of the outtakes and you realize, oh, I, I realize why they made that in outtake because there was that one little funny thing in it. But the rest of it was all brilliant too. And like those little flubs actually to me, for someone who who's already a hero to you, to me, it's it's almost like, it's a really beautiful thing because it just brings them down to earth and makes them human Yeah. also. And so yep. this kind of can offer that. I think this is yeah, something that can absolutely. offer that too. Yep, Sh showing people's like musical flaw tendencies as well as technology uh, tendencies. Yeah. You can really see which one of our, which ones of our musician friends know what they're doing and which ones yeah. don't. You know? <laughs> yeah, and, and amidst all that, the way people are shining too in, in that kind of low yeah. production value. Like yeah, you it's really great. See their true talents coming out and, yeah. and their hearts coming out. And uh, I, yeah, it's, been really, it's very real. It's all very real. I, yeah, that's a great word. As digital it. as it is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about um, this video. Um, Jam Bass is trying to do our part to support this crazy time we live in. We're doing all these things with the live streams like you talked about. Um, we're also just trying to drop a new video from the archives um, uh, every day. And we've been pulling different stuff out that we've just never edited before. Um, just sort of like if we had people in doing a dead tune and they did an original, we never published the original. Um, stuff from High Sierra, stuff from parties we've had and stuff. But this one's going to be a little different. Um, and I'm excited to talk about it with you because it was a really fun and crazy night. Um, so what we're going to do is when we had um, we had the Incidental Animals five years ago um, record Bertha um, for, for songs of their own, the, the video we ended up publishing was super unique in that we'd used like half of it from the backstage footage and half of it um from the live show encore from the same night and we like spliced them back and back together and somehow it worked um yeah, and awesome. uh so yeah we'll talk a little bit about that night because there's, there's actually a lot to talk about but first off incidental animals so that was or is um you brogan steve from alo um kyle hollingsworth on mm -hmm. keys and jen hartswick on the trumpet that's it right five of you guys yeah that's yeah. the band how did that band start? I don't remember. Or okay, maybe I never knew. It's a funny story. It's yeah. actually a funny story. You'll, you'll appreciate it. Uh, and, 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 and other people probably will too. But uh, we were actually, uh, uh, you know, Mike Greenhouse. Sure. He was, oh, was getting it his wedding? married. Yeah. Right. right. Like, I did know this. Like, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. He like, like, he, like, him and his wife, they love ALO. They love string cheese and they love Jen. So they're, you know, you know they love Trey Band. So, they were just like kind of like mulling over getting a band together and suddenly that whole thing kind of came up it, it like presented that we were available at the time when they were doing their wedding so so we decided oh well let's uh you know if we're going to get together and do that uh they had their wedding i think it was at the city winery in manhattan nice. um like let's make a run out of it so so because it was a ways off in advance when it when it got scheduled so so we uh we booked like you know five or six shows around it just in the northeast kind of cruised around and uh I think the wedding was either in the middle or the end. I can't remember, but uh, but it was. I was so stoked we did a run because sometimes you know one offs. Everyone like in a band like that, such great musicians, you can do one off no problem. Like, but to actually do a run, you get to like dig deep into it, and I think that's why suddenly at the end of it, 
the end of the little run, we were like, man, we should do this band more. It was like really fun. So, so then we've, uh, we booked, you know, some other runs. Uh, we don't get to do that much because the nature of that type of band, as you're well aware of everyone, yeah, individual has such a different schedule that when we can even link it up, it's special, but we've done some festivals, you know, we did a uh, high Sierra, uh, I think not too long after that. Uh, we've done some other festivals too. I can't remember which others. Off the top yeah. Of been a while though. Right. But it has been a while and we keep talking yeah. about trying to do more, but it's like between, between like, you know, the ALO schedules, the string cheese schedules, the, the Jen's tray yeah. schedules, then, and then beyond all our main bands, our just individual schedules are yeah. crazy too, because we all fill everything in. Anyhow, we're all, we're all musicians who like to work a lot. So. Yeah. <laughs> so we don't get to do, I think all of us agree, we don't get to do it nearly as much as we'd like to, but really yeah. fun, man. Yeah, totally. So I'll set the scene for this recording because it was, crazy and chaotic and, and it was <laughs> so <laughs> at the time i forget where the series it was but like you know we had it on the books for a while the gig was at terrapin in may um but also with um with you guys again sort of being a band that didn't tour that much you were all like very much in like planning the set list rehearsing mode yeah. and stuff back there and we were like hey like we're supposed to be like doing yeah. a video like what's up guys come yeah. on how hard's the set list you got like 25 tunes in this yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know i remember it so well because yeah we were we were at that show at terrapin too uh we were it was two uh, nights I it think. was two yeah. nights and phil yeah. was a special guest yes yeah on one of the nights so you know we wanted to get all that together and we totally. and of course added some grateful dead tunes in that people were you know, some people in the band were playing for the first time. So it was like yeah. getting that all together. And yeah, everyone like flying into town. Just yeah. To get so the we were going. like, we were all in the little awesome little outside backstage thing they have yeah. at Terrapin. And the plan was always just let's record it backstage, strip down, acoustic, whatever. Yeah. And you guys were like herding cats that day. Yeah, um, totally. You guys were so <laughs> good for being so patient too. Uh, oh, you're, you're lucky again. that we like you um <laughs> like, we, we like you all of you guys personally um so and then it was like all right we're not gonna be able to do it backstage but we'll do it as the encore from the show so we were like all right yeah sure like yeah. encore of the show sounds good we're not going anyway we're probably gonna stick around for the show anyway yeah so then like all that time we were, like trying to get you guys like just do one back here like strip down acoustic it just sort of wasn't happening and then you guys practiced the tune for the on yes. yes. And it, it, it was like start to finish and it was great. And like, as soon as you guys were done, we had like already just broken down the gear and we were like, guys, like that is literally all we were asking yeah, you to do. Exactly. And you just yeah. did it when yeah, we just broke hurtful. down all the gear. And then like in the moment we were like, we're gonna set up the gear again right now. And you're gonna do that again. We're gonna record yeah. it. And then we'll also record the encore and we'll see which one comes out better. We'll see what yeah. we do. It was so funny. It was like an hour and a half of trying to get you guys to do something. Then we broke down the gear and then yeah. immediately you did the thing that we were at. <laughs> it was a crazy and then, day. Uh, <laughs> and we're like, all right, so no matter what happens in the encore, we have that. That thing is fine. And then the encore footage came out pretty damn cool too. And that's when me and Jake were just like, let's just use them both. And like yeah. the, te the tempos were like super close. I, um, I was amazed by that when you guys put it together. Yeah. I was like, oh, how's this going to work? And it was like so cool. I thought it like yeah. really, and in a way, you really captured the spirit of a day like that, too. Yeah, like, yeah it was really fun. And there was like some cool teams. crowd shots from, yeah. like, I, think, I think you can see Gadiel uh, in the crowd uh, yeah. and stuff. So, so yeah, it's super fun. So what we're going to do is we're going to publish just the backstage version. So cool. sort of like that, that same video, but start to finish backstage. Um, and it's all of you guys that we talked about and, and Nikki Bloom as well. She, yeah. was, uh, she was there and Sigan was there for the rehearsal um, yeah. as well. Um, so yeah, the, the backstage one is fun. I think it's like you're on guitar and Steve's on an acoustic bass and like Kyle's like playing like a beer bottle. Like, yeah, uh, totally because like we didn't have any, any acoustic stuff, stuff and... for him backstage. Yeah, his yeah. gear was all out on stage. Yeah. I think that he was part of what we were trying yeah. to figure out at the time was like well how do we get kyle an instrument right <laughs> but i loved it when you actually when we actually did it there it was just like you said we just rehearsed it so it was like okay well let's let's just do that again and yes cool, <laughs> got it <laughs> it was fun so yeah we'll uh we'll publish the full uh the full backstage uh acoustic version we'll throw the full back and forth one alongside it too cool um yeah i was I, I was honestly surprised how it came out too i was actually just i was, I was digging through my email which has been fun trying to find old references to this stuff and um uh 
Jake has, we were driving down to Stanford. We recorded Modesky and Schofield doing Stella Blue. And, uh-huh. and, and Jake had like a rough cut of it. And uh, I was like finding the emails. I'm like sitting in the passenger seat in the, in the truck, driving down to Palo Alto, seeing the first draft of it and saying like, oh, you missed a beat here. Let's do the backstage one here. It's, uh, mm-hmm. it's been fun to relive. Oh, that's so stuff. awesome. I was like, oh yeah, yeah we were guys- missing this one on our way to Stanford. That was fun. Wow, yeah, that's awesome. You, I, yeah, you guys put it together so nicely. Really, that's really all Jake. Cool. Well, maybe a little more me. I, normally, I always just deflect. I'm like, Jake does all the editing. Yeah. When I actually <laughs> looked it up. I was like, oh, I actually did say verse one, chorus one, backstage, then nice. the, the trumpet solo and the whole thing that it's awesome. Does. So um, cool. Yeah, it was yeah. super fun. Um, all right, man. Well, I'll, you, you probably got a live stream you have to get. Oh, no, you have a, you have a virtual Seder, I think you need We're to We're doing a virtual Seder on, uh, on Saturday night, and, and we've been putting this whole thing together. It's, it's, it's been shaping up very quickly. Uh, yeah. We've got a really awesome group of musicians who are participating. We've got a very uh, special guest who will be making an appearance, uh, and we're this really excited. Saturday? It's Saturday night. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, Saturday, 3.30 p.m. Uh, West Coast time so that our East Coast folks can join in too at 6.30. Ah, gotcha. Yeah, the way it's gonna run down is uh, Wendy uh, Garflip, who, who's been running the Seder that we do every year at Terrapin. Uh, she's gonna be hosting it. She's on the East Coast in Massachusetts. So she's gonna host the Seder part. Um, and she's great. She kind of weaves all this deadheaded Jewish culture together. and She does it in a real cool way. And then uh, during the dinner part, uh, there's going to be musical performances. And, and this year, since we can't play together, there's going to be a bunch of uh, solo performances from folks like me and uh, Ross James, Scott Law, uh, Scott Guberman, uh, a mm-hmm. whole, whole bunch of people. Uh, yeah, there's a bunch. And then uh, there'll be, like I said, some special guests doing some readings, and it'll be cool. It's going to be fun. Uh, awesome. Awesome. Oh, All and right. people can, can see it on uh, Deadheadland. Okay, it's going to be uh, Deadheadland on Saturday. Yeah, I'll be streaming live through there. So. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Cool. Um, all right, man. Well, I'll, uh, I'll be seeing you through the camera. Awesome, man. Thanks. <laughs> Good talking to you today. You too. Cheers.